okay guys uh, welcome back let's continue with the previous topic in the previous class we were discussing about the use of various colors in topographic map and its meaning and we have already discussed the meaning of two colors one is blue blue color is used for showing perennial water bodies and the yellow color yellow color is main, mainly used for showing uh, areas under cultivation so let's continue with the remaining five colors black color black color i already told you this but i just want to explain this once again black color is used for various things like writing names name of name of places then uh, to draw the line of latitudes and longitudes and also to write their values then survey trees then their uh, numbers then heights like sport heights benchmarks all these values are also used uh, written using black color then non perennial water bodies like uh, dry streams lakes ponds uh, then river banks broken grounds all these are used uh, used sorry shown using black color also man made features like railways telephone and telegraph lines now if you see this contour map you will see a lot of uh, black lines here and there uh, most of the black color are used for showing dry streams if you see these are the southern part of the map southeast uh, eastern part of the map there are a lot of rivers in the middle we have a river only in this area we have blue uh, color that indicates the presence of water right now let's see this one by one and here we have one example of name all the names if you see the names name of the places name of canal then uh, type of vegetation right all these names heights all these are shown using uh, black color then uh, latitudes the horizontal lines these are also shown using black longitudes also uh, represented by black color then we have uh, certain conventional symbols like this one this one indicate uh, permanently sorry a prominently surveyed tree right then it is used for showing broken grounds these are actually tiny curved lines that is broken ground i will explain later what does it means then canals again canal is another dry water body uh, but uh, it's not sure whether it is uh, having water at present or not but uh, for both perennial as well as for seasonal canals also we use black color then here you can see a small part of the stream where the boundary of the river is shown using brown, brown uh, black color then the uh, river bed which is a dry is also shown using black dots here the height of a place is also shown using black and uh, many more uh, streams are there like uh, almost all the streams are dry that is why it is shown using black and only that if you see fire line here that's what shows shown, shown using uh, black color then there is uh, a dots number of dots are forming another line that's actually uh, a boundary right so black is used for sh uh, showing that also right so these are the uh, uses of black color in a topographic map moving on we have white color white color is mainly used for showing areas which are barren or rocky or bad lands they may not be bad lands but they are not used for cultivation so we call it as bad lands they may be ecosystem for a number of animals and birds and other organisms but it is uh, categorized as bad lands or rocky lands or barren lands it includes mainly three features on its stony waste then rock outcrop and sheet rock and there are some areas which is not used for cultivation other than these rocky areas they are also shown using white color they are called as open scrubs these are actually areas under vegetation but not suitable for cultivation in a map uh, you'll see white color in many areas and here in this map also you can see white and yellow but it's not that easy to distinguish but this will give you an idea so the area under the red line is actually white in color and in many other areas as you can see white as well as yellow now within the white you can see certain names like this say for example stony waste here in the eastern part of the map so stony waste is actually an area where a large number of weathered rock is exposed to the surface so stony wastes are shown using black color or written using black color then another rocky feature is sheet rock a large uh, area with a uh, huge sheet of rock exposed to the surface this was it's called it is called as sheet rock then another feature shown in blue white color is the rock outcrop that is and a, and a, a part of the rock that is getting exposed to the surface due to weathering so it's actually not a photo from india but a uh, rock outcrop in india also looks similar so these three rock features that is uh, sheet rock rock outcrop and stony waste are all shown in the white colored area that means they are not suitable for cultivation they are barren rocky land now other than these rocky features we have something called open scrub in the map it's not only in this part of the map you can see uh, in many of the many parts of the map but i'm showing only one for a uh, time being 
so this open stub is again uh, an area which is not suitable for cultivation an area which has only shrubs and bushes this kind of an area is called as open scrub so it is also shown in the white colored area now by seeing the white color we can easily um, understand that the area is not suitable for cultivation and the other areas like areas under yellow color means areas which are suitable for cultivation right so these are only few things shown using white color then moving on we have the next color brown color brown color is mainly used for showing sandy features like uh, sand dunes and sand hills then the contour features like contour lines and their numbering then form lines these are the three main things uh, shown in brown color in a topographic map now see this map in the southern border map we can see a number of areas which has brown feathery features not only the things which are shown in the circle but here in the northeast as well as in the central part of the map also you can see this brown feathery features this brown feathery features indicate sand dunes right these are sand dunes this is one sand dune another one another one right sand dunes are actually seen in the desert areas or the areas which are very close to the desert or in dry areas and uh, keep in mind we are studying only about the parts of Gujarat and Rajasthan then standard so we have many areas where we will see the sand dunes in large numbers not only sand dunes in some areas we can see isolated uh, sand hills sand hills are also shown using uh, brown color and at, at places you can see some values are written like 10 or 6 or 15 or right and here there is uh, another hour, 14 or right then 9 hour and we can see all these dots which is written uh, sorry pointed next to the value is on the top of this sandy features that means it indicates the relative height of that feature that means it is the height of that feature say for example if this is a sand hill and the value is written here as uh, say for example 50 r that means the height of this sand feature is 50 meters or it is located at least 50 meters above the surrounding areas that means it is the height so values of sand dunes are also shown in uh, certain areas and one thing interesting about this one particular picture which, which uh, picture which is not uh, needed for our syllabus is these black dots here you can see and here also you can see so these are actually not a mistake happened while editing these are camels camels climbing the sand hills okay leave it to that's not important for us right now moving on uh, again we have another set of uses with brown color that is contour lines you can see the entire map wherever you have contour lines they are all shown using brown color not only the uh, normal contour uh, lines every fifth contour you know in the, is called as index contour that is also shown using brown color not only the contour lines their height is also shown using brown color you can see it is written 400 here right and sometimes it may not be in the map sometimes it can be in the boundary whatever it is brown color is only used for writing the values of contours not the other height say for example 591 this is actually showing height of this one particular point this is a black dot here that is not shown using uh, brown color brown color is used for showing the height of contours here also you can see 220 right now i said to you in the previous slide that we have uh, form lines shown using brown color so if we zoom into this one particular area this one particular hill right you can see a number of lines in between this one particular index contour and this coat height that is 591 they have so many brown lines right here as well as here but they are not connected to each other they are broken lines so these kind of lines are called as form lines they will not show the exact height but more or less with uh, uh, some 80 to 90 percent accuracy it will show the height so what we can assume from this is height of this one particular point in the middle is 591 and this index contour is located at a height of 500 meters so this will be 520 540 560 somewhere here we will have 580 and this is 591 so form lines are used in certain areas where it is very difficult to actually calculate the height of that place so in order to replace contour lines form lines are used in certain area okay so moving on to next color we have green color green color is used for showing uh, vegetation and within vegetation we have forest and within forest we have various types dense jungle dense mixed jungle dense jungle means uh, very dense thickly uh, forested jungle actually indicates uh, forest area which is not disturbed by human human beings but 
uh, here in this context it has it does not have the same meaning right since most of the areas are already disturbed by human beings but uh, this term is used this term is taken from uh, hindi then after dense jungle we have dense mixed jungle fairly mixed jungle then other feature, other types like fairly dense mixed jungle with bamboo right or open jungle open mixed jungle these are all different types of jungles and we'll study uh, the importance of all these in detail in the coming videos that's not important for now what important is these are all shown using green color so these are all shown in areas which is shared in green color so other than these different types of classification we have another type of classification where forests are classified into protected forest or sheltered forest some forests are also called as reserved forest these are the areas which are protected by law where they don't, don't people don't have any access so these kind of forests are also coming under green colored area other than forest grasslands then orchards as well as the scattered trees are shown using green color here in this map as you see most of the areas are green in color right majority of the areas are under green color and within green color you can see names written like this fairly dense mixed jungle that means this area has a fairly mixed uh, fairly dense mixed jungle sorry then another one here in down south you can see dense jungle though it is very small in area we have a dense jungle here very dense then dense mixed jungle here in north not only here we can see in many parts of the map but i'm showing only one at a time then open mixed jungle right then if you see this map we have dense mixed jungle with bamboo right so it tells us something about that one particular forest part then fairly fairly dense mixed jungles right or if you see other areas also we can see certain other names are written right so green color is used for showing uh, different types of forest areas or uh, jungle areas right other than jungle areas it shows uh, sorry other than uh, those kind of characterization it shows protected forest also areas of forest which are protected under law which will have uh, guards where public cannot enter then some areas are reserved forest here you can see there is a boundary here right this is black black dot dots which is given there so it is reserved forest here in bangalore also we have protected forest and reserved forest you may might you might be knowing about uh, thurahalli forest right so these areas are, are all coming under protected for areas where common people cannot enter without the permission so this kind of areas are coming under reserved and protected forest then sometimes we can see sheltered forest also right other than forest we have a number of trees here you can see it is scattered here and there right this can be any type of tree these are not classified but there is certain symbol used for showing certain kind of trees say for example palms are shown using one particular kind of symbol but uh, it's not available in this one particular area of madhya pradesh we are not studying about Madhya Pradesh, but I just want to show you the symbol. That's why I have taken this map. So here you can see a number of trees scattered here and there. These are together called as scattered or unclassified trees, right? And uh, if you see this uh, right bottom corner or the northeastern part of the map, you can see something called as eucalypt eucalyptus plantation, right? If you zoom into that, here you can see a pattern. All the trees are arranged in straight line. That means it's a plantation where trees are planted. So it is. And orchards so orchards are also shown using um, green color now next color is red color red color is again used for a number of uh, features uh, most important thing is uh, the grid lines the eastings and northings and their numbering is done using red color then uh, a number of human made features are also shown using red uh, red color it indicates so it includes roads car track pack tracks then buildings of various kinds of built various size buildings then huts different types of huts are there permanent as well as temporary right all these things are shown using uh, red color and if you are familiar with grid lines the northings eastings and even their values are also shown using red color and uh, here if you see this map you can see a lot of red color features red colored features right a number of lines are running here and there right these are all called as car tracks right car tracks are the most common type of transport route which we can see in the villages uh, not now we have the maps of 1960s and 70s so at that time it was very popular it was very common it was common than the metal than the other roads so car tracks are very common in the, the were common uh, very uh, sorry car tracks were very common uh, on uh, during that, those times right so here you can see car tracks are connecting all the major villages say for example here we have one village bakhar then we have another village dandiwada then here uh, nodpa then here Moti, then here Ranavas, almost all these villages are connected by car tracks. So car tracks are also shown using red color. Now 
if you zoom into this delhi wada area again you can see a number of features shown using red color within this there are number of huts all these uh, red squares indicates permanent huts right so these are permanently used uh, huts right and temporary huts are shown using this kind of a symbol right but we don't have any temporary hut in this particular area then uh, another feature you can see is the metal road this road is actually under construction that is why uh, these are broken dotted lines right so we have metal roads we have metal road then unmetal roads right these are not car tracks these are roads which is completely completely wider than uh, car tracks but not metal so we have metal road as well as unmetal road all these things are shown using uh, red color right now again uh, same map but uh, i just want to show you something uh, like if you see this you can see uh, a village right comparatively a developed village we have a metal road under construction right then we have a railway passing through it then a railway station right so it's a comparatively uh, more developed area can be called as a small village small town let's say but may not be a town right here you can see a number of buildings are shown using uh, red color right these buildings are comparatively larger than the huts so it can be factories industries or something then we have a post office here a larger building right the po indicates post office then next to that we have a temple here right so all these man made features man made buildings are shown using uh, red color so that is it so we have came to the conclusion so there are seven different colors used in a map right blue color is used for showing tenya water bodies yellow to show cultivable land and one thing important is uh, whenever you write about yellow color you have to mention the same word areas under cultivation or cultivable land never ever use the term agriculture because agriculture is a broad, broad term where uh, number of other things are also coming in so yellow indicates area under cultivation then green color is used for showing vegetation various kind of vegetation forest scattered trees or stars the sands etc then white color is used for showing barren areas within which we have uh, three rocky features like stony waste rock outcrop and sheet rock and open scrub then brown is used for showing condos features as well as sandy features like sand dunes and sand hills black is used for naming places so latitudes and longitudes and also to show dry water bodies and there are some more and the red one is used for showing mainly human made human made features like uh, huts roads car tracks etc so these are the uh, meaning of various colors used in a topographical map thank you